Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. 2022 was the most epic year of arcade pickups. Can you believe this? We picked up 22 arcade games this year. It's kind of insane. So much I had to print the list out. So I'm gonna go down the list real quick and then I'm gonna pick my five favorite games of this year. And then I'm also going to have a couple honorable mentions in there. So here's the list so far. So this year we picked up Afterburner, a Simpsons that we converted to an X-Men, a Robotron, Moon Patrol, the Nintendo Super System, Daytona USA, Satan's Hollow, NBA Jam, NFL Blitz, the Sinistar Cockpit, Neo Geo, Qbert, Road Blasters Cockpit, The Grid, War Final Assault, two of those, Big Blue, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, Big Blue, Street Fighter 2, Sinistar Upright, Silver Strike, a Williams Multi and Akari Warriors 2. That's an insane list for 2022. But now I wanna go through my top five of that list, which is, this isn't in any order of like, how I, you know, one to five, it's just the order. Okay, I'm gonna give you the list of my top five. They're not in order of importance, it's just in general. My first one is Afterburner. This Afterburner upright means a ton to me. It has sentimental value and it's nostalgic. I'll give you the reasons. My grandfather used to take me to the arcade in Lincoln, Rhode Island, it was called Dream Machine. Him and I were both into fighter jets. He used to take me to air shows at Quonset Point, but we loved fighter jets. And so we gravitated toward Afterburner. And I remember him bringing me there. He's no longer with us, but he did everything with me. We did everything as a kid. He was always around me, always encouraging me to follow my dreams. And he's just a super awesome person. And I feel grateful that he is my grandfather. So Afterburner is special because it's one of the games I remember playing in and he was kind of watching uh, on the sidelines. So, so Afterburner is probably my number one. Okay, next up is Robotron 2084. The reason why Robotron is on this list is because they're really hard to find. The game is awesome. It's Eugene Jarvis. It's an amazing game. It kind of started a trend of these sort of dual stick shooters. You know, Smash TV is another great one, but Robotron 2084 is kind of the one that started it all, in my opinion. It's a great game. It's super addictive. It's really fun. The sounds are that classic Williams era 80s game. So I just love that I got it and they're really expensive and I got one at a good deal. So I probably wouldn't have gotten one as soon as I did, but because I got a good price on it from Cole over at Castles and Coasters, that one had to make the list. So I'm super excited to have Robotron 2084. It's sitting right here. It's not restored yet, but it's, it's well on the way. I'm probably, I'd say 60% complete. Okay, my next one was an unexpected one. It was my buddy, Nick Madsen, and that's Daytona USA right here. <laughs> Daytona USA is a game I used to play in the arcade a lot. It's super fun, it's head to head. Now, unfortunately, this is just the stand up and not the sit down, so it does lack a couple features, like it doesn't have force feedback in the uh, steering wheel. It's just kind of like a return to center spring functionality, but still, the game is awesome. It's super fun. It would be more fun to play with someone else, but I'm grateful to have it. And as a crazy Sega fanboy, this is very much at the top of my list. And it was one that was well sought after for me for a while. So I'm, I'm grateful to have it. The next one that I never expected to get, and I probably paid a little too much for, is the Sinistar Cockpit. That thing is epic looking, and it's an epic game. It's probably one of my favorite arcade games of all time, and I did not grow up with it. I discovered it later on. It's just awesome. It's so fun. It's stressful. It's anxiety driven. It's just everything you want in, in an arcade game. It's, it's just overall, it's just a great game. But to have the cockpit, which they did not make many of, I wanna say they made about 200 of them. So I don't know how many of these are in existence, but I'm one of not many people that has it. So that's a really cool piece that will not leave my collection. So Sinistar Cockpit's definitely in that top list. The next up would be the Big Blue Street Fighter 2. Now I had a regular Street Fighter 2 in a Dynamo cabinet, but there's just, I remember playing it in a Big Blue cabinet. So it's like, I do remember playing it in both, but the Big Blue was like the iconic, like, oh, when you went into the arcade. That was the one to have. So I, I, I got that. I never really did a video on it, unfortunately, but I'm really excited to have that. I don't know what my plans are for it. It's pretty much restored. 
it might need a couple little things here and there, but it's in good shape. I'm a big Street Fighter fan. I love that game. If you've been watching the channel for a while, you know that's probably one of the games that's uh, very iconic to me. It's very nostalgic for me because it was definitely front and center in the arcades when I was in the arcade. So that's my top five. So now it's on to my honorable mentions. So the Simpsons I picked up for a really good price. That was only $600. Right, but we converted it, my buddy Nick and I converted it to an X-Men. It's almost done, I have to finish the control panel, I'm waiting on a couple things. So that was interesting, because it was a pickup of The Simpsons, but really, my desire was to have an X-Men in the conversion, so that, that's a really cool one, because I love the X-Men, man. The X-Men is just such an amazing beat-em-up. And if you love X-Men, you have to love that game. It's just so hard not to love. There's everything, it's just, it's just amazing. It's a great beat-em-up. Uh, if you've never played it, you gotta check it out. My next honorable mention is one that's not going to me, it's actually going to Gerard, the completionist, and that's the Nintendo Super System that I picked up from Castles and Coasters. This thing's pretty unique. It plays three Super Nintendo games. It has this cartridge-based system inside and you kind of play the game. It's, it's sort of the Play Choice 10, but for the Super Nintendo. It's very cool. It's time in the arcades are kind of short-lived and I think Nintendo's idea was, hey, let's get and build some hype for the Super Nintendo and hope that they buy these games at home. Uh, Cause that was kind of when that kind of thing was sort of fading away from the arcade in general. So that's a cool game. Cool system, cool hardware, but unfortunately I'm not keeping that one. That one's going to Gerard the Completionist, which I have to call him up and figure out what he wants me to do with it. Because I could restore little bits and pieces to it or clean it up. I want to see what he wants and then we'll go from there. So next year, we'll definitely be delivering that to him and based on what we talk about, it'll be how I deliver it. Uh, so Mason, we're going to be going to LA next year. All right, the next one is Qbert. So Qbert's an honorable mention because Qbert is very hard to find. I mean, well, I shouldn't say they're hard to find. They're expensive. I didn't necessarily get a deal on this one. It was one of those, I saw it up for sale and I'm like, eh, it's Qbert, it's pretty iconic. It all worked until I got it home and then it broke. But um, that's the thing with arcade games, man. You can move them from point A to point B and they can break just from moving them. That's, that's real, that's real talk. They can break just for moving them. So just know, you're buying an antique. That's the reality of it, you're buying an antique. But anyways, Qbert sits in the storage unit right now. I'm kind of bummed that it's there. I just don't have the space to feature it here. Uh, but maybe if I can reconfigure some things and move some things around from tw for 2023, I can get that in here in the garage. Now my last one that definitely deserves an honorable mention is the grid. The grid I discovered way late it's really too bad that the grid didn't take off and it wasn't this like amazing success, but it was in the arcades at the way tail end of the arcades. It was also a game that, you know, it's like a third person shooter game. There was a lot of those on home console and PC at that time, you know, Quake, you had Doom, you had, you know, so you had them all out there uh, and you could probably play them at home and the gameplay would be more comfortable. So but it was very unique. Like it was a very, very unique game because it was kind of like, it was kind of like Smash TV, but, but like, and there's a truck of kids that just went by and completely disrupted my whole video. So the grid is awesome. There's the, the biggest grid fan I've ever met is in New Jersey. He's called a pinhead game guy. <laughs> I'm sorry, bro. I always forget your, uh, <laughs> I always forget your name, Pinhead Company, Pinhead Dude, Pinhead Guy. I'm looking it up right now. Uh, Pinhead Company. So go check out Pinhead Company. And he actually just started selling these grid plushies. So if you're a big fan of the grid, you'll want to check this out. It's all these plushie dolls. I don't know, he must have worked with Ed Boon and NetherRealm and Warner Brothers to release these, I'm assuming. But they're pretty cool. So I'll drop a link to Pinhead Company and... Hopefully right now, Mason's running the ad for that as well. It's the end of the year, guys. The professional level is down a bit. So if you want to experience grid the right way, you're either gonna go to Pinhead Company's house because he has two three node grids. I don't know, man, he's a super fan. He's got three three of them, so he can play these huge death matches. The place that I've played it in, in, in that kind of configuration would be Galloping Ghost Arcade. So if you're in the Chicagoland area, definitely go check out Galloping Ghost. But look up Pinhead Company on Twitter. I'll put his Twitter 
um, information somewhere over here. He'll he'll let you come to his house. He does these grid tournaments like every now and then. I can't remember how often he does them. I want to say like once a month or twice a month. I'm not sure. But yeah, he'll invite you over and you can play the grid. He even has a Halloween pinball machine. The guy's got some other stuff. So uh, super nice guy. Go check out his plushies and it's Pinhead Company. And I'm sorry that I just messed up your name like 10 times. But anyways, that's it for this video. This, I don't know if this is the last video for 2022, but if it is, that means that we're coming around Christmas 2022. And uh, I wanna wish everyone a Merry Christmas. And I definitely wanna make sure you know that I appreciate you supporting this channel. This channel has been my passion project for four years now. The channel turned four on December 19th, and I couldn't be more proud of the progress, the accomplishments, the opportunities I've had. I'm gonna potentially be in a documentary next year about Barcade, so I mean, that's, that's winning in my book. You guys watch, you're passionate about the hobby, I'm passionate about the hobby, we can share that together. That to me is winning, and um, yeah, I'm looking forward to sharing more of my passions with you next year, but Chasing Nostalgia will return in 2023. Who will the first place be? I'm not sure yet, but we're gonna get that done. I'm thinking February, March timeframe. I'm not sure yet. Stay tuned to the channel for more, but that's it for now, guys. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Consider subscribing to the channel. Put your comments below, I wanna hear from you. And thank you again for all your support in 2023, 2022. <laughs> I don't even know what year it is. And we will see you on the next one.